guys and welcome back to the channel if you are new here my name is sheena and i'm a digital content creator etsy shop owner and illustrator based in new york city so as you can tell by this title we'll be covering a bit more about the application called canva and just jumping into some of the basics to get you going so if you enjoy tutorials and content like this be sure to subscribe below so you never miss out and let's go ahead and jump in all right, so let's talk about it. What is Canva? It is basically a simplified online-based graphic design tool that allows you to make multiple projects ranging from business cards to Instagram layouts, Facebook headers, the list goes on. Canva is definitely a fan favorite and also one of my favorite programs to use online and it's mostly for these three reasons. The first reason is Canva is free. So if you're someone who is not ready to invest in the premium version and all of that, you're trying to save some money, this is a great launching point for you, especially if you're not ready for the more robust programs available. And the second reason is that it is online based. So what that means is all your projects and photos you upload are stored on Canva servers, which means they are on the cloud. So you don't have to worry about having a thumb drive or a hard drive or really doing any of that unless you want to store them offline. And the third reason is that Canva is fairly simple to use. You don't have to be a pro or know anything about graphic design to get started. It has this like drag and drop type of functionality, which many of us are very used to because of like smartphones and things like that. So I do not feel like you have to know your way around the software to really create some amazing work, especially because they give you a lot of options up front. Now, for those of you that have used many design programs in the past, I would say that Canva kind of falls in between PicMonkey and like Photoshop, which I've used all of them. And I would say that it kind of falls in the middle. So not so simple to where you can't get some amazing design work done, but not so complicated and robust that you're just sitting and staring at the screen for hours, not knowing what you're doing. So with all that said, I have my trusty laptop with me and we're gonna go ahead and do a quick walkthrough of what Canva offers and some of the basics to get you started. Okay, so now that we're all signed in, you will see that right off the bat, Canva offers you a search field. So if you're not really sure what you're trying to design, but you have a couple of keywords in mind, you can go ahead and type them in here. So let's go ahead and use an example. Let's say I wanted to make a YouTube banner or a thumbnail. Then I can simply type in YouTube and you see the options are coming up here. Canva will also give you the perfect dimension so that once you upload, your image isn't stretched or cropped. And that's probably one of my favorite parts because I used to keep a sticky note of all these dimensions dimensions, which was just a waste of time. Now, if we look below that, you'll notice that they also have just some regular templates listed out here, like things like postcards and business cards, a flyer, a letterhead. They also give you many options on where to explore. So they have a thing called Canva print, where you can make a project and Canva will print it for you. Like in a printing press, they'll show you the popular templates this week so that you can kind of keep up with what's really popping on the website. But this is just kind of to get you you started especially if you're someone who is brand new and doesn't have like a directory of projects just yet this is definitely a good launching pad now let's say you don't want to get started with any of these like pre-made templates that canva may have you can go ahead to the left and click create a design and you'll be able to create a custom design all your own um, i'm going to go ahead and just enter 1280 by 720 because that's just a dimension that i know by heart that is the youtube thumbnail dimension so i'm going to go ahead and click create design now, once you click that, the first thing you'll see is a slew of different templates. So again, if you are not a creative person, Canva is definitely for you. So if you look through here, there are many color options, design options, and honestly, they're really nice. Like these are not design options that you would like be ashamed to use on a project or have to do too many tweaks with. And that's why I love Canva the most. And as I'm scrolling through here, you'll notice a lot of these are free. A lot of these are free options because I do not have the paid Canva account. So what you're seeing here is legitimately what they offer. So basically use these as a baseline. I wouldn't necessarily choose one of these and then make it your final project um, because more than likely someone else has done that as well. And now you guys are going to basically have matching templates or matching media kits. So just be careful with that. 
So the next tab you'll see here on the left is photos. And just like it says, there are photos in here. And as I kind of hover over all of these, you will see that they are indeed free. So you can go ahead and search for photos. I'll type in like taxi. And you see they have a ton of pictures of taxis here. So if I go ahead and click one, it will import it into my template, into my project. So the pictures are endless. Go through here and choose what you would like, um, but you don't have to use these. This is just the library that Canva provides. Now, moving on to elements. These are basically going to be your squares, your triangles, your circles, your lines, um, just to kind of help you add some pizzazz, some personality to your project. So let's say I scroll down here and I choose a shape, it'll go ahead and put a square in here and then I'm able to alter that square. I can make it pink, I can make it purple, you can do whatever you want with it. So you're not having to worry about, you know, going on the internet and finding shapes or different elements like this. They're all built in. And as always, they have a search field. So if you're scrolling here and you don't see an element that you would like, you can search for it. So we're going to get rid of that and take a little scroll and show you guys. So even like social media icons are some elements they have on here. So let's say you're building a media kit or a business card and you wanna put your Facebook on there, you can simply hit the Facebook element, it will pop in, you can resize it and you know, do whatever you want with it. But there are endless options and again, a lot of them are free. You just gotta kind of search and hunt and find the right fit. So we're gonna go in and delete though, just so I can have a clean project here. All right, so moving right along to the text tab. So again, it's what it says, it's how you add text to your project. All right, so starting out, you'll see that the first options they offer are heading, subheading, and body of text. And it just helps to define which fonts belong where in your project. So for example, if you look at my little template I have right here, the words today's presentation are my header. So that's how they would be classified. So anything that I type in this area will match the corresponding font that I put with the header. Now, if I go back and look here, I would say the main topics is probably my subheader. So it has a different font, a different font color. Again, just a different way to classify it. And then at the very end here, all this extra text would be considered your body. So I hope that makes sense, but this is all information that you can dig a little bit deeper into if you need to. But long story short, you got a lot of text options. You have a whole lot of text options. And one thing I love about Canva is that the text options are not the basic ones that you would see in like Microsoft Word or any of those simple programs. You are getting like really nice, like, custom fonts that I honestly haven't seen in a ton of other places. Um, one of my favorites is the April fat face. I use that quite a bit on my YouTube videos and I got the idea from using Canva. So as I scroll through here, you can see all the various fonts. It goes on forever. So I'm sure you can find one that works for you. And then if you look at the very bottom, you're able to upload a font if you decide to go to the premium version. So if there is a font that you love, that is like your brand font and they don't have it for some reason, then go ahead and upgrade to premium and you'll be able to kind of keep things cohesive. And now moving on to the background tab, it's exactly what it says, it's a background. So if I didn't want this entire thing to be white, I could click on a different background and fill that in. Now obviously this like blue on pink, it's not my thing. Um, I personally do not use a ton of backgrounds um, because I feel like they overpower the design project. And I like simple and clean lines and clean colors. And I honestly don't like for a design to have more than like three or four colors where things get really busy. So again, it just depends on what you're working on to each its own, but I rarely use this area. Um, but it's nice to know that it's there if you need the option. All right, now moving right along to uploads. Just as it says, these are images and different um, elements that you have personally uploaded to Canva. I don't believe they have a limit. Um, if they do, one of you guys can correct me. I've just never gotten to that limit, so I haven't had to worry about it. But you basically go in, you can choose upload an image and bring anything over that you would like to. Um, I'm gonna just choose this thank you label as an example. But you guys have seen this label before. So I upload it, it is saved into Canva's like directory, so into their cloud so I don't have to worry about where it's saved. And when I wanna use it, I just click on it and boom, there it is. You can size it down, 
and then move it around wherever you need to. And I'm moving down to the folders tab. I've honestly never used this tab, so we're just gonna ignore it. It looks like it's more of a paid feature, um, but I haven't found a use for that. I upload where I need to in the uploads area and everything just sits there. So yeah, I'm not real finicky with this at all. And then last but not least is the more section. And basically these are just connectors that allow you to bring other application functionalities in to Canva. So you'll see here, like it lets you connect your Facebook where you can use Facebook photos and bring them into a design deck that you may have. They have Instagram, so you can click on that and connect your Instagram account to it. So endless options and these do not require you to have like the premium version either. All right, so now that you've seen some of the basics, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new project and kind of walk through it with you guys so you can see more of these tools and elements at work. So I'm going to grab one of these pre-made designs. So as you can see, they have the dimensions already ready for you and you can go ahead and start adding a template of your choosing. Um, all of these are great. I mean, it just depends on what you like but I want something that has a few elements in it so you guys can see like how that all works. So let's do the say it with flowers. Now I did want to take a moment to touch on layers because it doesn't matter what kind of design tool you're using, whether it's something that's super basic like Pick Monkey or something that's super advanced like Photoshop, you still need to understand how the layer type of functionality works because all programs use it. Um, it's kind of like a fundamental thing in the design world. So let's take a look at this project that we have and we can talk about how the layers work in this project. So as you can see, there there are flowers here you see my squares are showing me that they are a separate element and then I have the words in the middle here I have a white box and then I have a blue box in the back these are all separate layers so if I were to try to count all of these we have what what one two three four we have five layers here to work with and they all are independent of each other so while they are together and they look great together they are independent unless you choose to do something called flattening which makes all the layers one and I don't recommend doing that if you don't have experience with layers all right so let's get started by clicking on one of these elements and kind of messing around with them so one of the very first things you may notice is that the element that is on the very top are the flowers because they overlap everything else so basically just looking at this particular project our top layer would be the flowers the two flowers on the side and our very bottom layer would be that blue background and then the white and the words are kind of like sandwiched in between you know what I mean so let's take a look at the flowers if I click them I'm able to move them around I'm able to crop it I can flip it horizontal or vertical, whatever I want. And then I'm also able to go over here and change its positioning. So where it sits in that layer stack. So if I click position and do send backwards, it goes back. It doesn't go to the very back because that is our blue layer, but it does move it backwards. And if I wanna move it back forward, I click forward and that's basically how the layers work. So if you take nothing away from this video, please learn how to use layers, it will change your life. So if I click on the words here, I get some different editing options. So I can change my text to something completely different. Um, I can remove the words, hey there. And it's Canva. <laughs> like I can do anything I want with this, which is great. And then another button you guys may have noticed here in the top right is the copy option. And copy basically means duplicate in Canva. So if I click copy, it literally makes like a carbon copy. So now I have three flowers instead of two. Um, and I can just go back and delete that. But that's what copy does. Now, if you click this little grid right here, transparency is basically the opacity of the image. You can slide that bar up and down and change it a bit. So if the flowers are too bright for you, you can just kind of lessen that color, but still keep the integrity of the image. The next thing you'll see here is like this little link looking thing. And 
I know you're probably wondering like why would I need a link in Canva but one of the many reasons why I use a link function is if I am using a digital file and I'm sending it to someone and I want them to be able to click through the document so I actually make my um, client like proposals in Canva I've been doing that for months now if I do an illustration project I like to send the client a proposal form and in that form is a link that they can click which takes them to PayPal so they can view the invoice and also kind of view the scope of work so that's why I use it but there are various reasons why you can use the link function you also have the lock so if you want a layer to be locked down you don't want to mess with it you don't want to accidentally do something to it you can click lock and then there you go that layer cannot be manipulated at all like you can't touch it you can't copy it it is just locked and of course you have the delete option hit delete the layer is gone if that's a mistake you can always click the arrow here and bring it back pretty simple right you guys like even just choosing a different template and messing around with it is going to get you the experience you need to be comfortable with canva so again tapping around this layer is obviously my background if i click this one it's a top layer it's a text layer this square looks like an element um it's just a square that's actually hollowed out so options are endless all right so taking a pause i hope you guys are still on board hearing that most of this makes sense now if it doesn't i would say you probably need a bit more of a deep dive into canva or just how to use basic design tools and for that i would recommend using our video sponsor skillshare now if you guys are new here and have never heard of skillshare haven't seen me partner with them before they are basically an online learning community that offers thousands of classes in various different topics ranging from marketing to entrepreneurship and even how to use Canva. Now for this video, I went ahead and logged onto Skillshare just to check out some of the Canva tutorials to make sure I wasn't missing anything that was super important. And I could not believe how many search results there were for the Canva based courses. Now one course that I saw that was pretty popular had close to like 1500 students is by a guy named Jeremy Deacon and the course is about 30 minutes long so it really gives you just what you need to become comfortable with Canva and be able to use it for more projects moving forward. Now let's say you're someone who's watching this video and you feel like you're fairly advanced and you're ready to take some more high level classes. Skillshare does offer a premium membership which gives you unlimited access to high quality classes of people who are actually experts in this field who can show you all the ins and outs to truly improve your skills. And Skillshare is truly one of the most affordable learning platforms as they offer an annual subscription that is less than $10 a month. So for those of you who saw the premium features in Canva, I would honestly recommend putting that money maybe towards Skillshare so that you can learn how to improve your actual skills in Canva and then figure out if maybe you want to pivot into something more advanced like Photoshop. And because Skillshare is so awesome, they're actually partnering with me on this video to give the first 500 people two free months to check out the platform. And in two months, you guys, you can learn so much about Canva. You'd probably even be better than me because I haven't gone through all these courses just yet. But that link will be below if you want to go ahead and sign up and join more than 7 million creators learning on Skillshare today. Now, even though I absolutely love Canva and I do use it here and there for a few projects, I want to say my main driver is going to be Photoshop. Um, I probably use Photoshop 90% of the time and Canva about 10% and I mainly use Canva to make my thank you cards for my Etsy inserts which is where most of you saw it and requested this video. Now when it comes to the thank you cards I've decided to actually upload a tutorial on my Patreon just kind of showing how I took the same foundational aspects that I've shown you here to create these from scratch. So if you have not checked out my Patreon already, I will have a link below for you to kind of go poke around and see what it's all about. But I have all types of content on there from a podcast to blog posts to helpful freelancer tips in my podcast, along with full on tutorials for those of you that want a deeper dive. And definitely comment below and let me know what other tutorials you would like to see on this channel. I'd be more than happy to make them for you guys. So that's it. This is your girl signing off and I will see you in the next one. Bye.